Praise be Jesus and Mary. So today here in this diocese, we celebrate the solemnity of the Ascension. As we know, traditionally, it is celebrated on this past Thursday, and it marks, as it were, the vigil just prior to the prep, our preparation, the beginning of the Novena of the Holy Spirit, which generally starts the Friday after the Thursday of the Ascension. <clears throat> it's kind of a good little marker ordinarily. Hopefully all of us are joining and uniting with Our Lady and the Apostles in this first Novena, if you will, of the Church that they uh, lived in their time, at the time when Christ, just after Christ ascended, and with them, let us be united, asking for the graces of the Holy Spirit, his strength, his fortitude, and all his gifts. We're reminded that this is a gift that in our Lord's parting, he promises to us. We're also reminded, if we're sensitive to these things, you know, it's one of the things that Peter points out, it's a gift promised to all those who obey God the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit doesn't bring about a new revelation, but it brings to our minds what Christ has done, what Christ did. Those are the, we often talk about, you know, following the inspirations and being docile to the Holy Spirit. And it's something in a particular way, you might even say of all the things that you might want to pray for and the gifts that you might want to receive, is especially to be sensitive to the motions of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I pointed out yesterday too, <clears throat> you know, we, one of the things that attaching kind of yesterday's uh, celebration with the visitation of Our Lady to the, this, our Lord's leaving and his command to us to go out and he tells his apostles, you are my witnesses. You know, and to go out, and I mentioned to this, you know, we're to go out like Our Lady, and proclaim the Lord, to draw attention to the Lord. And it doesn't have to be uh, by preaching. Our Lady didn't bring about the sanctification uh, of St. John or Elizabeth, except it began with her mere greeting, something just ordinary. And this is one of the things that, if we're in God's grace and for striving to do His will, that's part of our witness. Then when we're able to share the faith, it will touch people's heart. And sometimes, you know, we read the lives of the saints, and, you know, again, just bringing up this example even of Our Lady, the simplest things that we do can be a moment where God communicates His grace and touches a heart and brings it to Him. And this is one of the reasons why we want it. We want to strive to be in God's grace. And to, you know, we're out there to oppose the world. And so we need to expect to be opposed. Sometimes we feel ashamed to give witness to Christ. You know, say grace, as simple as say, even saying grace before meals. You know, some people, they feel like they want to crawl under the table. We shouldn't feel like that. You know, if it bothers you, you, you close your eyes so that you're there with God alone. Because it's to God whom you're praying. You're not praying to make a show of yourself. You're not, you know, if, if it's distracting that you think people are watching you because you've got to make the sign of the cross, well, close your eyes and say your grace. Put yourself in the little chapel by God, with God and God alone so that you can thank God for his gifts and not be ashamed to witness to Christ. And if people want to ask you, you know, well, what are you doing? It's, it shouldn't, Again, you shouldn't be ashamed. It's an opportunity to share your faith. It's an opportunity to catechize and teach, well, why and how come, to have an answer. It's an opportunity to witness. And in the case when people actually ask us why or how come, or sometimes even bringing, maybe they'll bring us a problem because they realize that we're people who are close to God and maybe they want an answer from someone who's close to God. And so we, we should prepare ourselves for those opportunities, not being ashamed that sometimes we're singled out because of it. 
but expecting that sometimes we'll be singled out because, and sometimes even put to the test. You know, people want to see you. Oh, are you for real? They'll pull you. <laughs> sometimes they pull you aside and you, you know, all by yourself. And sometimes it's, you know, they, they're, they're probing you and you have, to, you have to tell them the truth. Now, if they're telling stories that are wrong, we tell them, well, that's wrong. It's a sin. And not to be afraid of those things. They will happen. And it's one of the ways people learn that you're really on board that you really mean what you mean and that you say what you're saying and you're really honestly trying to be someone who follows Christ. Pope Benedict XVI <clears throat> in one of his homilies would remind the church one part of the church, but you can say all the church in this, in this one church that he's talking about, that with the ascension, we know that Christ is, in one sense, he's left us, and yet at the same time, he promises that one of the mysteries of God, he can say things, and it seems to sometimes be talking in two different ways, but we have to have that understanding, that he leaves us to ascend in heaven, and yet he doesn't leave us alone because he's with us in the Eucharist. One of our duties as Catholics is this witness, particularly in the family, to share our faith with the youth. And it's one thing to teach our children the faith and the catechism, but we also need to teach them how to live it. That, in particular, are those times when we're, especially we think we're given a private witness. That private witness is the faith that's lived by oneself. And when we think no one's looking and no one's watching. When everyone's out doing something else and you're the only person who's home alone and, well, it's the family prayer time, but family's not here, so I'll just skip it. Skip it. You're the Moses on the mountaintop. While the family's out there in the world, you're going to skip your opportunity to pray to God and support your family who's out in the world with your prayers to obtain God's grace that they be true witnesses. God's left you at home to be the Moses, praying for your family out there in the world who are hopefully being living witnesses of Christ. Such opportunities. When we're by ourselves, and sometimes when we think we're by ourselves, that's when the children, and sometimes the spouse, find out that we are for real. We're willing to pray by ourselves. We're willing, even when, no one, when we think no one's watching, we still realize that God's watching and that we're always in his presence, and that what he sees in secret, he rewards. But it teaches also that we have to be, it teaches our children and others that we are sincere, that we take our faith seriously, because it's not just while well, the sun is show that I put on when I'm in the presence of others. It mustn't be a show. God doesn't reward such shows. Or you might say he does, but it's unfortunate for us because <clears throat> we'll hear those very sad words at the end of our lives. You have received your reward. We become no more than what our Lord complains about with the scribes and Pharisees widen their phylacteries. And, you know, it's like you can put a build, big billboard on yourself. I'm a Catholic. Oh, okay. Good to know that. Really? <laughs> I couldn't. If you had put that billboard on yourself, I wouldn't have ever known. <laughs> good, thing I, good thing I found out. We're sometimes, you know, if we're not living our faith sincerely, we're oftentimes the worst people in society. You open your eyes and watch that. You know, you meet people who are Catholic in name only. And a lot of times, they're the worst example of what anyone who wants to call themselves a Christian. They're not Christians. They don't talk like Christians. They don't act like Christians. And this mustn't be what we are. Christ has ascended into heaven to prepare our place. Our place isn't, you know, we're not out of the world, we're in the world. We're not to expect necessarily great things, although on rare occasions one Catholic or another might, might become well off or a big name or whatever. But generally speaking, most of us are going to be unknowns. And sometimes we may even be climbing the ladder of, of fame and find ourselves, you know, as it were, the carpet jerked out from underneath us and we're left with a simple life. 
although we could have been something great if we wanted to be worldlings. And we have to remind ourselves it's better to have a little in Christ, in poverty, than to have much and lose it all in the end. True riches are those riches which will be saved up for us in heaven where Christ has gone to prepare us a place. This is one of the things that we want to contemplate where our Lord has left us to go to heaven. He's not, he's not left us to be idle, but he is preparing a place for us by working with us here and now, working with his graces, cooperating with his graces, that together with him, he will reward us based on what we do how we do it, and most important above all things, how we have loved him in our service to him. That's our real witness. Love doesn't separate. And with separation, it actually draws closer because when we love somebody, truly love somebody, they're always in our minds. They're always in our hearts. They're never truly separated from us because we think of them. And we keep them close to us by our prayers. May Our Lady help us to draw close to the Lord, to work with him and to be instruments in his hands, cooperating with those inspirations of the Holy Spirit as we continue this novena to the Holy Spirit for another seven days, preparing for Pentecost next Sunday, asking that we might help our Lord build up his kingdom, not just in this world, but in the everlasting world, where many souls, God willing, through our prayers and our penances, we might have, might bring more souls to heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.